Gentlemen, welcome back to shop today. We are doing the brake disc on the little Suzuki Swift. It's a 2015 model, so let's get into it. Make Always make sure you that your wheels are chopped. Uh, when you've jacked up, put it on jack stands. Make sure that everything's stable and bricks, breaks up as need to be. No use uh, having a car on your back uh, when you're working on it. Stay safe as always, guys. Okay, so first of all, we take off the little hop cap. Starting on the left side, no, no, no special preference about it. And then we're going to take off the uh, front wheels. You can do it with a wheel spanner. If you're using a wheel spanner, just make sure that you crack the nuts before you jack up the car. Otherwise, it's just going to be a hassle. The M impact makes it a bit easier and a lot faster. So uh, that's why I opted for it. Once you've got the tire off, you'll see I put the tire underneath the car. That's just extra insurance in my mind. If something should happen, then your car's not on the ground. Might be some dents in it, but especially if you're under it, you've at least got a tire width. To breathe on. Next up, uh, open up the uh, brake fluid fill cap. Make sure that there's some space left. We'll be compressing the uh, slave cylinder so the uh, brake fluid slash oil will definitely rise up into into that funnel. Okay, so now you need to compress the slave cylinder a little bit, otherwise you're going to battle to get it off the rotor. That's all you need. Make sure that. Uh, you just compress that uh, cylinder a little bit and it pushes back the brake fluid into the reservoir. So you'll see that I just put the little pry bar into the vent hole of the rotor and just jammed it open so that I can just pry open that uh, cylinder a little bit to get the caliper off of the lip. Okay, so once we've got that done, just using the impact again to remove the caliper, the two caliper bolts are 17 millimeter socket size. Uh, once again, I use the impact, but I've done it years and years only with a socket set, so that's not a big issue. Uh, once you've got that done, the caliper should just slide off. Make sure you've got everything. Just fold it over and put it on top of the rotor. Make sure that you do not let it fall and rip the uh, brake line off. Uh, once you've got that done, you can start to, to remove the uh, old brake pads. They come out maybe a little prying, but quickly and they're out. Okay, and you can see uh, what's left of the brake pads. The outer one was totally worn down, almost metal on metal, just caught it in time. The inner one uh, still had a bit of meat on, but we were right at the point where the little safety feature start rubbing on the rotor. Um, that little piece of metal sticking out there is basically a little whistle. It uh, starts making noise as it rubs on the rotor when there's not enough meat left. Um, and it acts like a tuning fork, so it uh, it warns you before it becomes a major safety risk. Uh, quite clever, quite clever. You think the wheel's falling off, but the um, naturally it's just rubbing on the on the rotor. Okay, so now we can just clean off everything with brake parts cleaner. Just make sure we're getting all the brake dust off and all the mating surfaces clean for when we're putting it back together. That uh, you don't get the old brake stuff uh, stuck in between. Here you can see how much uh, the old pad is worn down. This is an old one versus a new one. So uh, ah, it's gone for this life, but uh, got some good mileage on it nonetheless. Okay, so once that's done, is uh, we can start putting the whole thing back together again. So uh, just remove the retaining clips. There's two brake pad retaining clips. That just prevents the brake pads from rattling within the caliper. Um, and keeps them in place during your normal daily drive. It, it, it looks on the four corners there and that fits back into the caliper. So what we'll do is we will uh, grease all the shiny parts. There's a little sachet of grease that comes with the pads. I don't know what's in it, I don't know what it's made of. Uh, nonetheless, just put a little dab on all the shiny surfaces. No use to, there's no use to, to overdo it a little bit. It's more than enough, it just makes everything uh, move against each other where it should without uh, biting into the parent metal. Once we've got that in, then we can put the back one in. Sorry, I'm speeding it up, J just a monotonous piece. Uh. <coughs> there we go. Try not to get the grease on your hands. And then we can start to fit the brake pads again. Okay, so uh, on the four corners that goes into the little keeper plate, I put a little dab on there as well. 
this is the front one I actually want to make ash out of it but uh, it's better to start from the inside out otherwise you must work past stuff and it just becomes an absolute mess so you'll see me here I put the one down and uh, then start doing the, the innermost one here we go and now we can start putting it in uh, make sure you've got it the right way around though And it should slip in. A little bit going this way and that way. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to get it underneath that little keeper plate. Now, oh, come on, focus. There we go. Uh, once it's under the keeper plate, you can start doing the other one. Unless you, like me, forgot to compress the slave cylinder completely. I built this little tool out of an old um, brake pad with a 10 millimeter bolt in it. Works a charm, I'll put a link up in the corner of how I build it. There's a video of it. And so you can just take out all the clips and start from scratch again. Get it in there, get the bolt turned down. Come on, there we go. Right, so now you can just uh, screw in the bolt. Use a 17 socket with a 3H T handle on it just to get it to the point where it sits and from there you can you should actually well I normally go slow I don't, don't see the need to go fast because as I'm compressing the cylinder I keep my eye on the brake fluid reservoir because as previously said as you compressing it the uh, brake fluid will fill back up will push back up into the reservoir so uh, I always keep an eye on it to make sure that I don't spill it out in the front end of the car. If it, you just remember, if brake fluid gets on the car paint, uh, that paint's done for this life. So uh, rather take it slow and make sure. And then once you've totally compressed it, just uh, unscrew it a little bit and then you'll be able to take it out again. Maybe unscrew it a little bit more. And there we go. And now we can fit the... Uh, brake pads back again firstly the little retainer clip and then once everything's in we can start to fit the uh, the brake pads now they should not fight you that much but I don't think it's just as easy as just slipping them in uh, the, getting them to fit underneath the little retainer um, just check it out and you'll see it slope that eventually just does, does come into place once all that's in place we can refit the uh, brake caliper the caliper bolts I put a little bit of Loctite on I don't know if it if it does anything and uh, but I've always done it that way so never had one come loose uh, bottom bolt as well a little bit of Loctite I think this might get too hot so the Loctite might not work forever and ever but nonetheless been doing that it that way all along uh, once you've got them in place and lined up we can use a little socket and a ratchet it's a 3 8 drive once again 17 millimeter socket uh, just to snug everything up I'm not going to tighten it up just getting all the mating surfaces together and making sure everything lines up once you're at the, that point then we can put the torque wrench on it uh, factory spec is 75 Newton meters uh, torque on the caliper bolt. Here we go. Bottom one. And there we go. Okay, once that's done, we can just uh, straighten the steering back up and put the wheel back. Uh, you'll see how I'll put the nuts on, but I'm not going to torque them down right now. I normally do that when the car is standing on the ground. Otherwise, if you put the torque wrench on it now, you're just going to spin the engine around. Uh, it's not going to go anywhere. Just using the uh, 19 socket just to get it tight and, and, and in place. Okay, once that's done, we can move to the right side. Um, once again using the impact getting everything off there especially if it's dirty like this uh, full of dust like this it's a uh, bit of a mess but I can't want to say that bad just uh, keep your mouth closed at this point in time 
impacts running out of the air at this stage. I think my compressor is down. Once again, putting the tire underneath the car. Swinging the uh, steering back out again. This is almost a real-time thing. And there you can once again see me pushing the pry bar in the vent hole in the rotor and just pushing on it onto the caliper and there you can see the caliper starting to compress. Well, the piston in the caliper starting to compress. Getting the caliper off uh, once again using an impact 7 mm, 17 mm bolt. There we go, first one. Second one, once again remember to hold on to the caliper as it will fall off and you do not want to lose a brake line because then it becomes a total shit show. Uh, don't want to be replacing that on a Saturday morning. Once again, turning them up and sitting them upright. Normally the uh, pads come out fairly easy. There we go. These have got some more meat on. I don't know why the left hand side wore down faster than the right. Maybe leave it down in the comments if you've got a reason why the one side would wear down faster. This time I remembered my little tool. Just take out the retainer clip. Retainer clips. Chuck in the little tool. And once again, this time you'll see me actually go very, very slow. Uh, I'm looking over the bonnet uh, into the little reservoir, brake fluid reservoir. So for now I'm still gunning it and you'll see as I get closer to the edge. Ah, oh, I didn't show on this one. But I'm right, right, right on the edge there. Can't compress it anymore, otherwise I'll start leaking in, so in the uh, engine bay. Once again, doing the little uh, greasing thing. All the shiny spots. There you go. Now on the inside. Oh, no, no. So let's clean. Let's clean up this caliper first. Once again, just a little bit of brake parts cleaner, getting all the dust off the making surfaces and where everything sits. Drip tray underneath. And now we can just uh, replace the little keeper rings. Once you get the first, once you battle with the first one, the, the second one is actually most of the time a little bit easier. Most of the time, I fought the second one much more than I, than I have the first one at times. So once again, putting in the back uh, pad first, and once that's in place, this one uh, had a bit of a fight on me, and then we're putting in the front one. Okay, so now everything's sitting back. Once again, locked tight on the caliper bolts. Making sure everything lines up. Normally at this point you need to press in the uh, the rotor. Here I'm just talking down the um, caliper bolts at the back. As you can see the rotor has worked some but it's still in a fairly good shape. Uh, no need for resurfacing that one. There we go, 75 Newton meters. 
straighten up the uh, steering again and put the wheels back on. <coughs> Once again, just uh, get everything in its place and snug and tight. Uh, here you can see how much the brake fluid has pushed up um, right to the brim. You zoom in there, but there we go. What I'm going to do now is I am going to press the I'm then pressing the brake pedal, so I'm actually extending the cylinder, the two brake cylinders again, and you can see the the fluid level going down. There, it's a right up on the full mark, so 100%, and we can replace the cap now. There we go. And car back on its feet. Uh, torque down the lug nuts. I think it was 95 or 100 uh, Newton meters. Can't remember what the book says. 100 Newton meters. There we go. And then slap on the uh, little up cap again. If you've made it thus far, thank you very much. Uh, please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already done so. It really helps the algorithm and really helps us out. And with that, I'm going to call it and say thank you very much, everyone. And uh, as always, stay safe. <laughs>